This is Ronald Coleman, inviting you to radio's most dramatic half hour, Favorite Story. Whenever I see Shirley Temple, I always get a bit of a shock. Somehow I always expect a little Miss Marker with golden curls and a gingham dress. Instead, I find myself face to face with a quite sophisticated young lady in sequins with an upswing hairdo. The last time this happened, Shirley and I began chatting about this radio series. And I mentioned that we'd like to dramatize one of her favorite stories. It was hardly a surprise that she picked a book which girls from 7 to 70 have loved for three generations. Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. So, we invite you to a living room in Concord, Massachusetts some 80 years ago. And we invite you to meet the young lady who will tell our story, Miss Jo March. Hello. My name is Jo March. We live in a very nice city, Concord, Massachusetts. The date is December 9th, 9th, that's right, 1863. There are four of us. Four daughters, that is. There's Meg... She's very pretty. Oh, thank you. And Beth? Beth's kind of dainty. And she loves music. And she's sort of our pet. Joe, dear. And Amy. She's a prize, but flighty as a bumblebee. That's fine, I must say. You compliment everybody else and just label me. Oh, if you mean libel, Amy, say so. And don't talk about labels as if you were a pickle bottle. Well, you don't have to be satirical. <laughs> Joe, say something about Mommy and Father. Sure. Mommy's just beginning to get gray. She's been that just beginning to get gray way for years and years now. Daddy's fighting the war between the states, and we miss him very much. I guess you'll have to say something about Aunt March. Must I really? Mm hmm. Oh, well, there's Aunt March. She's sort of a great aunt. And I ask you, how would you like to be shut up for hours with a nervous, fussy old lady? Who worries you till you're ready to fly out of the window and who keeps calling you Josephine? Josephine Christopher Columbus. Oh, Joe, dear, you mustn't talk about Aunt March that way. And don't use that expression. Oh, all right. Somebody ought to say something about you, Joe. Not at all. Well, I will anyhow. Joe's the best writer in the world. And she has the nicest smile and, and the most beautiful hair ever. Pooh. Now that you've met everybody, where can we start? Let's just skip around, and maybe when we're all through, it'll add up to a picture of us, us little women. Joe, Joe, where are you? Right here, Meg. Oh, look, an invitation, a full-fledged invitation to a dance tomorrow night, and Mommy's willing that we should go, only... Only what shall we wear? <laughs> What's the use of asking that when you know we shall wear our poplins? Because we haven't got anything else. Oh, if I only had a silk. I'm sure our pops will look like silk, and they're nice enough for us. Yours is as good as new, Meg. Oh, what's wrong? I forgot the burn and tear in mine. Whatever shall I do, Meg? It's in such a funny place. Oh, you must sit still all you can and, and, and keep your back out of sight. The front's all right. I'll be as prim as a dish. Now go answer the note. We're going to that party. What is it, Jack? They brought the orchestra all the way from Connecticut. <laughs> Meg, where can I hide? Hide? Ooh, whatever for? That big, hard-looking, red-headed boy's coming this way. I'm sure he's going to ask me to dance. Joe, where are you going? I'm going to sit into that little closet behind the curtain where I can peep and enjoy myself and see. Joe! Christopher Columbus. Hello. Oh, dear me, I didn't know anybody was here. Oh, no, don't mind me. Stay if you like. Shan't I disturb you? Not a bit. I'm only hidden here because I don't know many people. 
It's all kind of strange, you know. So did I. <laughs> I think I've seen you before. You live near us, don't you? Next door. Oh, you're Mr. Lawrence. Yes, and you're Miss March. No, I mean, I'm not Miss March. I'm only Joe. Well, I'm not Mr. Lawrence. I'm just Laurie. Laurie Lawrence? What an odd name. My first name is Theodore, but I don't like it. The fellows call me Dora. Oh, no. So I made him say Laurie instead. <laughs> I hate mine, too. It's so sentimental. I wish everybody would say Joe instead of Josephine. How did you make the boys stop calling you Dora? I thrashed them. Oh, well, I can't thrash Aunt Mark, so I suppose I'll have to bear it. Will you do that? I'd like to, but I can't. I told Meg I wouldn't because... Because what? Well, you won't tell? Never. Well, I have a bad trick of standing before the fire, and I burn my frock. I scorched this one. It's mended, but it shows. So Meg told me to keep still so no one would see it. Look. <laughs> you may laugh if you want to. It is funny, I know. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you how we can manage. There's a long hall out there. We can dance grandly. And nobody will see us. Come on, please. Thank you, Laurie. You know, we're going to be great friends. I guess there are certain days that stand out, and you remember them always. Like the day the telegram arrived. Uh, go to the door, Meg. Yes, Mommy. Telegram for Mrs. March. Sign here, please. Oh, Mommy, it's one of those horrid telegram things. What? What? Uh, Joe, you open it. I don't dare. All right. Here, Mommy. Girls. It's your father. Mommy, no. Mommy, no. Let me read it. Your husband is very ill. Come at once. S. Hale, Army Hospital, Washington. I must go. I must go at once. Mommy. Oh, okay. Mommy. Children, children, help me. I'm going to start getting something ready for you, Mom. That's right. There's no time for tears. Oh, let me think. The next train goes in the morning. I, I'll take that. But first, a note to Aunt March. Oh, Joe, dear. Get me a pencil and paper. Mommy, you're not going to ask that old grouch for money. Joe, I have to. I haven't a cent. She's certain to refuse. Father needs me. And some way will be provided. I'll think of a way, Mommy. I'll think of a way. I'm so worried about Joe. She dashed out of the house first thing this morning and didn't even say where she was going. Oh, Laurie's gone to look for her, Mommy, so don't worry. And we haven't heard from Aunt March. What are we going to do? It's almost time to leave. There's somebody coming now. It may be Joe. Oh, it's Aunt March. I'll let her in. Hello, Aunt March. Help me in and be careful of my knee. Well, what's this I hear? Your father's sick in Washington. I knew he'd get a fever or something. Never did know how to take care of himself or his money. Well, you needn't beg me for help. He'd give his last dollar or the shirt off his back to the first man who asked him. Where would I be now if I'd done the same, I'd like to know. Won't you sit down, Aunt Mark? No, I won't. So, now you need money for the railroad trip. Just as bad as he is. Well, I'm a sick woman, and I need all I've got. The money will be repaid, Aunt Mark. <laughs> when, I'd like to know. Such wastefulness. Gallivanting off to Washington on a scare telegram. I can't afford such trips. Where's Josephine? She's the only practical one in this family. Joe's out, Aunt March. Laurie just went to see if Just she could... as I thought. She's probably gadding about with that rattle-brain boy. It's, it's not proper. Uh, Joe is not with Laurie, Aunt March. Well, so what's the matter? Tell Josephine to come and read to me. Well, I hope for good news of my nephew, but I don't expect it. March never had much stamina. Good day. Good day. Well, uh, here's the 25 you asked for and a check for 50 more. Oh, and more. Well, I know there are plenty of bills to pay. Oh, my me. My me. I'll never sleep a week tonight. She didn't even give me a chance to say thank you. Oh, Mommy, I was afraid she wasn't going to give it to oh, me. Oh, I was sure she would, Meg. She has a kind heart. She's... Just a shame to show it. Marley, you got the money. We were afraid to come downstairs, Marley. Oh, here comes Joe up the walk now. 
Mommy, I saw Aunt Marge storm out of here. But don't worry about her. We're independent of her now. But, Joe... Here, Mommy, here's my contribution toward making Father comfortable and bringing him home. Twenty-five dollars. Joe, where did you get it? You haven't done anything rash. No, it's mine, honestly. I didn't beg, borrow, or steal it. I only sold something that was my own. Look. Oh! oh. Your hair. You cut off your hair. Oh. Joe, how could you? You're one beauty. Oh, my dear girl, there was no need of this. She doesn't look like my Joe anymore. But but I love her dearly for it. It doesn't affect the state of the nation, so don't wail, Beth. It'll do good for my vanity. I was getting too proud of my mop. I'm satisfied. But, Joe, it wasn't necessary. And March has helped us. Oh, Oh, what made you do it, Joe? Well, I was wild to do something for Father, and I'd have sold the nose off my face for him if anybody would have bought it. I saw some tails of hair marked $40. It's not nearly as thick as mine. So I dashed into the shop and asked what they'd give for it. I don't see how you did. Didn't you feel dreadfully when the first cut came? Well, I did feel strange when I saw it cut off and on the table. Yes? It's Laurie, Mrs. Marks. I'm ready to take you to the station. The team's all hitched up. Oh, dear, it's time to go already. I'm ready, Laurie. Joe, what the dickens have you done? You trying to make a porcupine out of yourself? You look like... Hush, Dr. Laurie. Children, I leave you to Hannah's care and Mr. Lawrence's protection. May guess, be prudent, watch over your sister. Yes, Mom. Be patient, Joan, don't do anything hasty. I won't, Mommy. Comfort yourself with your music, best dear. Oh, Mommy, Amy, I... help all you can and be obedient. Yes, Mommy. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, Mommy. 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 Goodbye, M
How are you today, Beth, dear? I'm happy when you're with me, Joe. Do you mind if I sit here at your feet and write? Mind? Oh, Joe, I'd be honest. Pillow all right? Fine. Beth, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong, Joe, dear. Hello there. I'm coming in to see you tonight. Hello, Laurie. Oh, look at that boy. How strong and happy and well he is. Yes, Beth. Isn't he the most wonderful boy ever? Excuse me, Beth. I'll be right back. I have to get a book. Good, Joe. Mommy, where are you? In here, Joe. Oh, Christopher Columbus, why didn't I realize this before? Well, I thought, Joe. And don't use that expression. She's in love with him. Who's in love with who? Beth, she's in love with Laurie. Of course she is. We're all in love with Laurie. But that special way, Mommy, with that special look in her eyes. Oh, Mommy, what if he shouldn't love her back? That would be dreadful. Joe, listen to me. You mustn't try to run lies. But he must love her back. He must. I'll make him. Oh, Laurie, we're so proud of you, graduating with honors and all. And now you must have a good long holiday. I intend to, Joe. Don't look at me like that, Laurie. Please don't. I will. You've got to listen to me. It's no use, Joe. We've got to have it out, and the sooner the better for both of us. Say what you like, then I'll listen. I've... I've loved you ever since I've known you, Joe, and couldn't help it. You've been so good to me. I've tried to show it, but you wouldn't let me. Now I'm going to make you listen, and you must give me an answer. We just can't go on like this any longer. Laurie, I wanted to save you this. I thought you'd understand. I know you did. But girls are so strange that you never know what they mean. They say no, and they mean yes, and... Drive a man out of his wits just for the fun of it. I don't. I never wanted to make you care for me, and I've tried to keep you from it. I know you have. And it's made me love you all the more. I've worked hard to please you, and I gave up everything you didn't like and waited and never complained. You see, I hoped you'd love me, but I know I'm not half good enough. Oh, yes, you are. You're a great deal too good for me. And I'm so grateful to you and so proud and so fond of you, but... But that's all, Laurie. Really, truly, Joe? Really, truly. Oh, Laurie, I'm so sorry. So desperately sorry I could kill myself if it would do any good. Laurie, we'll be good friends all our lives. Be reasonable and sensible. I don't want to be reasonable or sensible. Joe, I don't believe you've got any heart. I wish I hadn't. Goodbye, Joe. Please. Laurie, don't act as if this is the end of the world. One of these days, you'll find some lovely, accomplished girl who will adore you and make a fine wife for your home. I wouldn't. I'm homely and awkward and odd and old, and you'd be ashamed of me, and we'd quarrel, and I wouldn't like elegant society, and you would, and you'd hate my scribbling, and I couldn't get on without it, and we'd be unhappy and wish we hadn't done it, and everything would be horrid. Anything more? No. Except that I don't think I shall ever marry. I... Laurie. Laurie, where are you going? To the devil. Laurie. Laurie. Goodbye, my boy, Laurie. Goodbye forever, my poor Laurie. What is it? I lay awake all night thinking of Meg, dear, happy little mother. You know, Joe, I, I think I've just been waiting to see Meg's baby. Beth, oh no. Joe, dear, I'm glad you know and, and understand. I, I've tried to tell you before, but oh, I just couldn't. Don't talk like that, Beth. You're going to get well. No, Joe. I, I've known it for a good while, and... And now I'm used to it. it. It isn't hard to think of or to bear. Is this what made you so unhappy, Beth? And you kept it to yourself so long? Well, it, it would have been selfish to frighten you when when Mommy was so anxious about Meg and, 
And with Amy going traveling to Europe and... And with you so happy with Laurie. But I thought you loved Laurie, Beth. I thought your heart was full of love all the while. Joe, how could I? When he was so fond of you. Oh, nothing matters but you, Beth. You must get well. You must. Oh, I want to. Very much. I, I try, but... But but every day I, I seem to lose a little. You know, it, it's like the tide, Joe. When it turns, it, it goes slowly, but... But it can't be stopped. It shall be stopped. You're too young, Beth. I'll work and pray and fight. I'll keep you in spite of everything. Oh, Beth. I, I'm not afraid, Joe. But... But it seems as if I should be homesick for you. Even in heaven. You see that little bird up on the windowsill? How tame it is, Joe. You know... You know, I like peeps better than gulls. They're not as wild and handsome, but... But they seem happy, confiding little things. I used to call them my birds, and... And Mother said they reminded her of me. You're the gull, Joe. Strong and wild and... And fond of the storm and the wind. Flying far out to sea and... And happy all alone. Meg? Oh, Meg's a turtle dove. And... And Amy's the lark, trying to get up among the clouds, but but always dropping down into its nest again. Beth, Beth. Joe, dear, D don't hope anymore. It won't do any good. I I'm sure of that. But we won't be miserable, but, but enjoy being together while we wait. We'll have happy times. For I, I, I really don't suffer much. And... And I think the tide will go out easily if you help me. How many years can erase a loss? Are there years enough ever? But life is for the living, the old philosopher said. And so the March family went on, even without... Laurie met Amy traveling in Europe. And when they came back, Laurie came directly to our old spot in the garden, looking for me. Joe. Laurie. Oh, my Laurie, you're back. Are you glad to see me, Joe? Glad, my blessed boy. You don't know how glad. Where's Amy? Your mother has her down at Meg's. We stopped there by the way, and there was no getting my wife out of their clutches. Your what? Oh, the dickens. Now I've done it. You've gone and got married? You and Amy? Yes, please. I never will again. Actually married? Very much so, thank you. Oh, you, you absolutely take my breath away. Tell me all about it, Laurie. Oh, how good to hear you say Laurie. Nobody ever calls me that but you. What does Amy call you? My lord. That's like her. Well, you look it. Why, yes. Don't I look like a married man and the head of a family, though? Not a bit, and you never will. You've grown bigger and bonnier, but you're the same as ever. Now, start right and tell me how it all happened. I'm dying, you know. Well, I did it to please Amy. Oh, fib number one. Amy did it to please you. Go on the truth, if you can, sir. When? Where? How? At the American consuls in Paris. Joe, dear, I want to say one thing, and then we won't ever talk about it again. I'll never stop loving you, but the love has changed, I guess. Amy and you switched places in my heart, that's all. You were right all along, Joe. You told me to be patient, but I never was much good at it. So I went around for a while with one heart slightly broken. Oh, Laurie. I was just a boy then, and so mixed up, I didn't know which I loved best, you or Amy. So I tried to love both of you. But now you're in your right places. And I can honestly share my heart between my sister, Joe, and my wife, Amy. Will you believe it, Joe, and go back to the happy old times when we first knew each other? I'll believe it with all my heart. But, Laurie, we can't ever be boy and girl again. The happy old times can't come back, and we mustn't expect it. We're man and woman now with sober work to do, and playtime is over. I'll miss my boy, but I love the man as much and admire him more because he's going to be what I hoped he would. We can't be playmates any longer, but we can be brother and sister to love and help one another all our lives. Can't we, Laurie? 
Dear Joe. I can't believe it. You children are really married. I'm going to set up housekeeping. Why, it seems only yesterday I was buttoning Amy's pinafore and pulling your hair when you tease. Mercy me, how time does fly. Why, Joe, you're crying. I'm happy, Lord. Happy for you and Amy. <laughs> That's the story of the March family. Part of it, anyway. I think somebody ought to say something about Professor Bear. Oh, Christopher Columbus, Meg, the story's over. Don't use that expression, Joe. I'll say something. All right, Mommy. Joe's going to marry the professor, and he's a very wonderful man. And Joe's written a book. It's all about the March family. It's a very nice book, and it tells a lot more about it. It's called Little Women. Thank you, Amy. It's all right to be Little Women. There's something about spring that makes you love it very much. But you can say some beautiful things about summer. And autumn can be lovely, too. Oh, yes, Joe. Autumn can be lovely, too. Listening to the favorite story production of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. Our thanks to the cast, including Adele Longmire as Joe and Dick Hogan as Laurie. A program note here that Betsy Kelly, who played Amy, is Mrs. Jean Kelly, he of the dancing feet. Our thanks also to Claude Sweeten for his musical score and to Miss Jerley Temple, who chose Little Women as this week's favorite story. If you read the book and saw the motion picture, then you surely won't miss hearing our favorite story production of Wuthering Heights. Emily Bronte's weird and haunting novel was selected by the distinguished author and publisher, Mr. Bennett Cerf, as his particular favorite story. We hope you'll be listening. <laughs>